Well, there's a special event this weekend, super exciting at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. Author Leonard David joins us now to talk about his new National Geographic book, Moon Rush. Good morning to you. Good morning. So we're, ta here. we're talking about the moon again. So talk <laughs> about the new moon space race. Well, you know, I'm, I'm 70 something and I, <laughs> I, I went through Sputnik 1. Oh, wow. The beginning of the space race with the Soviets, now Russia. And I'm convinced, in my own view, uh, that we're seeing something common. We're probably going to have a Sputnik effect if we don't pay attention. And China is the country to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, NASA has an aggressive new program themselves to go back to the moon within a five-year time frame. So um, it, it's a space race, but it's an odd combination of things. And then you have the public-private partnerships right. that NASA is trying to do with uh, here in Seattle, Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. and a Blue Moon and Blue Origin uh, space program. So it's a pretty exciting time. So there, uh, to me, there's a billionaire class race, there's a race between countries, and there's, uh, I think it's gonna be a, a new moon. <laughs> literally, a new moon. literally. And why do you think it's so important to, to go back and explore? And I know that we're seeing renewed calls for there to hopefully be the first woman to go as well. Right, well, you know, Again, uh, 50 years in July, Apollo 11 landed, you know, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. And, you know, between 1969 and 72, we had 12 people walk on the moon. That's a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And you'd think after spending $25 billion, we'd know where the moon came from. From the science side, there's a yeah. pretty interesting story that, to me, the moon is still going to have to tell us. Mm -hmm. And even with all the moon rocks we brought back. So that's one part of it, the science. Um, multiple countries are very interested in going back to the moon for technology reasons. Um, you have the European Space Agency, um, who's trying to uh, design a moon village. They haven't picked a mayor yet, but you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, they'll probably you get volunteer? there. Yeah, I don't know about that one. but. Um, <laughs> But China right now has got a far side rover on, you know, on the far side of the moon. It's running around uh, taking uh, pretty interesting uh, new uh, science uh, data. So that's, that's China. So you have the, all this hubbub. Mm -hmm. And I think the moon looms. It's going to be big. It's going to be in our future. Uh, there'll be encampments and settlements, um, somewhat like Antarctica initially you know, where we have these bases and people come and go. and So, but I do think it'll, tourism is surely on there. Really? Yeah. Oh, sure. Well, tell us about the event at uh, the Museum of Flight in Seattle with Very regards to this. Very happy to be here in Seattle because the museum is just terrific and uh, they have a great celebration going on here about the moon. But you got to learn about the moon in the past. That's great. But also, we got to start looking at the future. And that's multiple countries going. Can we work together? Is it, how much of a race is this really going to be? The one thing that's happening, keep an eye on the lawyers. Oh, really? Yeah, because there's parts of the moon you want to get to before anybody else. Because there's water ice there. You can make rocket fuel. You can make uh, propellant, uh, you know, all kinds of things. So the lawyers are already hovering around the craters, you know, which, yeah, who's going to be? Yeah, I wish I was a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's another part of the story. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Author Leonard David, we appreciate it. We look forward to the event today. And um, this is, it's so interesting. We talk so much about Mars that we don't hear as much about the moon. So thank you for your perspective. Thank you. Appreciate it.